and Maria took me to community events in the Native community and all that kind of stuff, you know? Like, I, she, she, let, she took me in. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the show that we did in, in, in Saskatoon, there was some weird contract, and I left all that stuff to Paul. I just, I, I didn't, I, there was some contract that was starting to be a standard in theaters then, and, and uh, I signed it. I didn't even know what it meant, and it meant rights for TV and film, and all that kind of stuff that was just not the experience and not the level at which we were going into. Mm -hmm. And Maria saw it, to her, it was a bad treaty, and we were trying to get her to sign something which I didn't even know. She, if she'd said, I don't want to do it, nobody would have done it. It was mm -hmm. much looser than that. Mm -hmm. But with her experience and her heritage and history, mm -hmm. to have white people sign a piece, shove over a piece of paper that you haven't even talked about beforehand and go, yeah, sign away your TV rights mm -hmm. or 5% of them, mm -hmm. she just flipped. And um, she was very angry, and I, and I hadn't dealt with it or thought about it. Mm -hmm. No. And... And so she just said, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm not interested. Take the play and do whatever you want with it. And I did. Mm -hmm. And then sent it to her. Right. And I think by this point, Native Earth was coming up. Thompson Highway was coming up. And I think that, I think I knew that whether this was transgression, appropriation, whatever it was, my mm -hmm. guide was Maria. But something in which a white person had such a huge role was probably not going to be done everywhere. I just didn't know. Mm. And so we talked about, she, see, she has great ideas. Mm -hmm. She talked about us getting down all the arguments that we had had and all the, everything that had gone on and getting it down and putting it into a book. Right. But I don't think she thought I would actually do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> You know, crazy white girl with a bone, in, with a, you know, mm -hmm. like a dog with a bone. Mm -hmm. But I knew how important that could be. I knew that what we were doing was unique. And if we mm -hmm. could stand the pain of actually reliving these arguments, which were still hot between us, mm -hmm. and getting them down, we would really have something to offer people, mm -hmm. something absolutely unique. Mm -hmm. So she came to my house, and she stayed at my house, and we taped... I don't even know if I still have these tapes. We taped these discussions, arguments about what I did wrong and how this process had came to be. And then mm -hmm. she was mad when I did do, take the play and do whatever mm -hmm. I wanted with it. Mm -hmm. But she'd said so, but I was mad, but you should have known why. It was just, mm -hmm. and also just my guilt, right. white middle class guilt at the seeing what had happened. And I was learning about residential schools. Mm -hmm. You know, Maria's partner had gone to residential school, you know, and learning about that when it was not common knowledge to other white people. I mean, I was, de I was devastated. I was in shock. And yet I wasn't going to give up. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So we not only published the play, but we published this dialogue. And as we're doing it and I'm writing it or parts of it. I'm realizing that I look bad. Mm. Um, there's no way to look good. Mm. There's, no, there's no way to look good, even if whatever good faith was or whatever, there's no way to look good. Mm. And in it, Maria talks about stealing. Mm. And even though I'd been handed this material at the point where I took off and wrote it, Mm -hmm. She said, I just, I think she saw me as goody-goody. She said, I, I just wish you would admit it, you know? I said, okay, I'm a thief. She goes, fine, we're all thieves. Artists are thieves, mm -hmm. right? That's what we are. Mm -hmm. We thieve and we steal things and we give it back. Mm -hmm. And it was so great. I, you know, when people talk about the nuances of appropriation, which are never to be clearly understood, Right. Am I going to write the Andrew Moody story, you know? I would love you to. <laughs> <laughs> and if you could put me in the film. <laughs> in the, in the, and the, then the film. Here, here, the here's, film. The, here's the contract. Exactly. I'll sign it. I'll sign it. Are you kidding? Um, so, painfully, mm -hmm. we, we did it. And then I 
had money from some film shoot because I was also still able to uh, make money. Mm -hmm. And now I started putting the book together. Mm -hmm. And you know, spent like months. This is another reason I didn't go to Los Angeles for pilot season was I was putting together the book of Jessica because I wanted to put together the book of Jessica. Right. Yeah. And I thought, when Maria and I published that, that we were going to get a ticker tape parade down Young Street. I mean, idiot, me pretending to know my country, you know, right, right. because I knew because of what it had cost both of us to do it. Mm -hmm. Because Maria was getting for her community. Why are you giving all this stuff to this white girl? Mm -hmm. You know, you're betraying us. Mm -hmm. And what I was getting was, why are you killing yourself doing this play when there's other things you could be doing, but also why are you doing something which is hurting you? Mm -hmm. A lot of real pain involved in that. A lot of me almost setting myself up to be wrong to make, to make the drama between Maria and I better. Mm -hmm. And we have, like we're still working on the seven hours of film that was the book launch, mm -hmm. which involved everyone from Lorena McKinnett because we wanted the Celtic side. because. Mm -hmm. Maria is mixed blood, mm -hmm. and uh, Thompson Highway's uh, brother Rene Highway dancing, and you know all kinds of things. But I was so shattered by the time, and so afraid of what people will say about me, because mm -hmm. it was like setting myself up to be called a racist or called, mm -hmm. uh, you know. That I remember, I said to someone at the party, "I hope people buy the book, but don't read it." <laughs> now that's not me. That's not like me, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was afraid of what would be said about me, mm -hmm. and I knew Maria was protected by everything, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but then she wasn't protected by her own community. Going, what are you doing, doing this with a white person? So mm -hmm. it was like both of us were getting it in in various ways. But that book is sold all over the world. People mm -hmm. have done PhD theses. We didn't get the ticker tape parade, but right. and every once in a while, someone will phone me up and. I realize that I'm just getting trashed because all these people are in university reading this book, mm -hmm. getting to know Maria, getting to know her work and mm -hmm. where she comes from, and then reading Half Breed because of it. Mm -hmm. But in order to do that, they've got to hang the white girl. Yeah. So I, you know, mm -hmm. it was, um, it, it, it's something I'm so proud of doing. But it's like, it's like going into dangerous territory, you know, there is scar tissue. It's funny because, of course, you know, uh, like being a black actor, you have uh, opinions about appropriation of, of course voice, you do. of course. Um, uh, but my opinions are mitigated by the fact I'm also a writer. I know. So, I mean, right now I'm doing research on a play where characters are from Afghanistan. <laughs> so, I How can't. How dare you? I know. So, you ha like, and also I've had women in my plays, you know? Yes. And so, I mean, I, d I cannot ever speak for your experience as a woman, and I don't pretend to. All I can do is do the best research I can and try desperately, because you could have a play with all guys, you could, but that's not what I want to write. So I think, so all this to ask the question like, it's obvious that you and, and Paul, you didn't go into this experience saying, we're gonna make a lot of money off of natives. We're going to become famous because we're just going to steal all this stuff. It seemed as though you had a, a, a quite a, a large amount of sympathy and, and concern and care. And yet, it, it, things went pear-shaped. One of the things that Maria said is that it was like, what was also interesting to her is that we wanted to join. I mean, she was used to people looking down on Native people, mm -hmm. which never occurred to me. I right. was fascinated. I was mm -hmm. in love. I was just, what yeah. I was learning about their culture was just fantastic. And I, there was never a sense of that, mm -hmm. you know? It, and she was, was still used to that. So mm -hmm. it's like, I think Thomas King is the best writer about this level mm -hmm. of the level of appropriation, because they will say it's not the same as gender. Mm -hmm. Culture is not the same as gender. Okay. Or maybe race is not the same as gender. I mean, this is, this is something that goes around and around to a point Maria didn't necessarily at the time believe. Because mm -hmm. she was the one going, I'm, a ha I'm, a, I'm half white. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got to reach. This is my honesty. Mm -hmm. But there's also, as in any political movement, the activism of uh, First Nations people where there's a point where there shouldn't be gray areas. I think mm. people believe there shouldn't be gray areas. It wasn't the time for gray areas. Mm. But the knowledge that I learned, uh, knowledge that I learned, what I learned, I knew when Oka happened, mm. 
-hmm. the Oka standoff happened. That was the first time in mainstream that I see Native people becoming a part of mainstream conversation. Mm. And so anything about you know pacifism and all of that, it was like uh, Oka brought it to what I already knew. Right. You know, the residential schools, I already knew that. And mm. there was almost a burden for me to know these things mm. and not have them part of my general culture. Mm. But wh whatever it was, we were also able, and I was able to enter territory which I wanted to enter, which was, if there is nothing sacred, if you can't bring in the gods, mm -hmm. then how do you ultimately do theater, which is large? Mm -hmm. And so when we had, I mean, you know, when we did Jessica, it was incredible success, partly mm -hmm. because we were the link between native culture and white culture. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the grand chief, um, oh, I don't remember his name, but mm -hmm. who was the head chief then? You came, you know? I mean, it was a real, there was a lot of um, cross-pollination. Mm -hmm. You know, D D Graham Greene was kept alive by this mm -hmm. Hasmurai, you know, gave him, you know, all kinds of work just so he could keep on working. There was mm -hmm. a connection that I think was natural um, between um, people who worked at Pasmurai and Native Theatre, and there was also connections with other theatres as well. Mm -hmm. But there was this sense of there they are, and then, and then they had their huge explosion. Mm -hmm. And it was an interesting thing in timing, but uh, the next time that, that Jessica was done, Tantu Cardinal played Jessica. Right. And I was very happy to relinquish that and be the writer. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, how was Jessica done it was a combination, like a lot of my uh, like some of my work has been combinations of traditional playwriting, which is you sit down in front of a screen or a mm -hmm. typewriter and you write it and you're by yourself, mm -hmm. and improvisation. Mm -hmm. So when I went into that room with Maria and Paul and mm -hmm. sort of improvised the play, and but they helped me to sort of mm -hmm. paginate it and push it all together, mm -hmm. that was one way of writing. And then when I took the play after it seemed Maria wasn't interested, then I did the writing process. So mm -hmm. all of this has led me to now being, like now I mostly use traditional ways of writing and have for quite a while. So it was that point after Jessica? Kind of, yeah, because then I was pulling it together. Mm -hmm. Stuff that I had improvised, but also Maria and Paul had put into. Mm -hmm. So again, we're into a kind of collectivity, but all of a sudden then I want to write the play, because mm -hmm. I want certain things to happen. Mm -hmm. And Maria weighed in on, on that afterwards. So it was weird collaboration, weird process of writing. But afterwards, I like to keep a certain amount of improvisation going because it was the way, it's my gateway into mm -hmm. something. And that work is less literary, it always will be, mm -hmm. but also has a very direct connection to the audience. Mm 